Hello everyone and welcome to another incredible game that just finished from round 2 of this year's Norway Chess. We are in the classical section and it is Ariantari versus Nodirvek Abdusator, the game that I mentioned that uh, finished uh, while I was recording the previous video. And uh, it's, uh, it's as the title says, a blunder uh, basically wins the game. How this is possible uh, with such elite players? Well, that's chess and the, anything that can happen also will happen. Uh, and, uh, you know, of course it happens everywhere in life, but here it, it, it's uh, very rare to see uh, w with such uh, skilled elite players. So let's see what I mean by this. Uh, uh, let's check it out. Uh, Ariantari has the white pieces and he opens with e4. We have pawn to c5. Uh, Nodirbe goes for the Sicilian defense. Knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to b5. Challenging the Sicilian with the Nishmet Dean over Solimo attack. Pawn to d6 and castle. So now uh, this is all very standard stuff bishop to d7 rook to e1 knight to f6 and pawn to h3 we have pawn to a6 challenging the light square bishop bishop back all the way to f1 and now uh, there are many uh, popular moves that can be played here like e5 e6 g6 even g5 if you want to be uh, super aggressive but the move that uh, Noderbeck plays is a move that has never been played before and that is rook to g8 simply preparing pawn to g5 and it is now as of move 7 that we have a completely new game. And for a classical game that features a Sicilian defense, uh, that is not something that we see often. But, uh, you know, as uh, as we go further into the future, it's something that we are getting used to more and more as players are really going out of their way to uh, try and surprise the other guy as much as possible. So d3, uh, pawn to h6, preparing g5, and now uh, Arian says, all right, I can't just, uh, you know, uh, wait, be idle, uh, and wait for a g5, g4, I have to create something, and he plays pawn to b4, and uh, this is not recommended by the engine, uh, but once you play it, the engine says, all right, I was wrong, this is actually perfectly fine, uh, as it often is with, uh, with moves like pawn to b4, and now how do you react to this? Of course, if you capture with the knight, then you lose control over the e5 square, let's say knight captures e5 and now after d captures knight captures uh, your king is still in the center of the board and since you want to attack on the king side you want to keep the center closed it's a general principle in chess so c captures on b4 instead and now pawn to a3 trying to give up more material to it uh, to uh, develop pieces and start an attack against the black king so pawn to b3 uh, attacking the base of the pawn chain and now just pawn to c4 not willing to, um, uh, to, to capture away from the center and pawn to g5 and okay uh, queen captures on b3 pawn to g4 Nodrebek's attack is um, uh, progressing very nicely h captures knight captures and now pawn to d4 you can see that it's not very easy to uh, checkmate the white king as long as this knight is on f3 so queen to a5 uh, and now knight to c3 just nicely developing uh, the point is uh, okay if you try something like queen to h5 sure you can try that but uh, there's just no way to kick this knight away from f3. You could uh, consider some like knight captures on d4, knight captures and then queen to h2 checkmate, but bishop to f4 stops all of that, so uh, you will have to wait with checkmating idea. So just bishop to g7, continuing development with tempo, the d4 pawn is now hanging, and pawn to e5. We have d captures on e5, and now a nice Svishenzug, uh, bishop to d2. Making uh, e captures on d4 impossible, because if you do this, then just knight to d5, opening up an attack against the queen and there's no good way to react to this if queen back to d8 you will play bishop to f4 and now you are really in uh, in trouble knight to c7 check is happening the e7 pawn is under a lot of pressure so you don't, you don't want to play this uh, so instead after bishop to d2 uh Nodrebek just goes back with the queen queen to d8 and now pawn to d5 uh, attacking the knight here knight to d4 and now knight captures on d4 now it's a little bit different because the queen has no access to h4 so uh e captures on d4 and now knight to e4 and here we have bishop to e5 knight to d6 check is kind of a threat uh, but as you'll see not really a, a a great one bishop to e5 now with some ideas of bishop to h2 check if if needed pawn to f4 and now bishop back to h8 and remarkable as it is knight to d6 check doesn't do anything for white you will just move the king and if anything even black is better here there is not uh uh, not a good way to counter this uh, once the pawn moves the queen is coming to h4 it's not going to be pretty so after bishop to h8 just pawn to c5 now you are ready to start advancing some pawns here king to f8 sidestepping this check because it might be useful in the future and now rook a to c1 now really preparing pawn to c5 pawn to d3 
a beautiful move by Nodrebek. Uh, point being that after queen captures on d3, uh, you have bishop to b5. And now where is the queen going? You can't go to c3, you can't go to e3, you, you have to move from d3. And once you move bishop to d4 check and you have all, all, all sorts of new problems here, there's um, no good way to get out of this. So instead bishop to c3, you have to counter this monster bishop on h8. Uh, pawn to e6 and now just... Um, uh, uh, pawn to c6 going after the bishop on d7 so pawn to c6 and now bishop captures on c3 you could consider some other moves uh, but um, uh, you know it's not uh, not easy uh, b captures on c6 kind of should be played but uh, it's uh, it, it's very hard to, to, to play to play a move like this so bishop captures on c3 queen captures on c3 and now comes queen to h4 and this is what I meant by the title of the video. Uh, it's exactly this blunder that wins uh, Nodirbek the game. Queen to h4 seems like a scary move because queen to h2 will be checkmate. Uh, but uh, feel free to pause the video and figure out why this is actually losing the game uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on realizing that, uh, well... Uh, that uh, that previous line that we've discussed, B captures on C6, the reason why I didn't show it to you is because it would spoil the pause the video moment. It kind of involves the same tactic. So if you, if you found that, then truly congratulations. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is queen to B4 with check, which is different than what um, uh, was played in the game. Tari played queen to C5 check, and that does not work. The point is that after queen to B4 check, how do you react? If king to E8, you just get checkmated. Okay, that's pretty straightforward you're going to capture king d8 you're going to play a check here king captures rook to c7 check and as the king hunt progresses you will very quickly get checkmated king f8 and rook captures on f7 will be checkmate so the point is after queen to b4 check you have to go to g7 but now what's the problem with uh, white's position well you're getting checkmated on h2 so let's just cover the h2 square queen to b2 with check also covers the h2 square King goes to f8 and now pawn to g3 opens up the way for the white queen. And also with tempo because the black queen is now attacked, which means you're just going to lose the bishop for free. Queen will have to move. You're going to capture on d7 and that's pretty much it. You capture on e6 as well. Whatever queen captures, bishop captures on d3. You're up a full bishop. You are winning this game easily and black has no real uh, real threats here. Uh, so that's the problem. However, queen to c5 check was played and now Noderbeck's attack um, uh, is uh, coming with tempo. King to g7, bishop captures on d3, and now queen to h2 with check, and the king hunt begins. King f1, queen captures on f4 with check, king to e2, and now e captures on d5, making queen captures on d5 impossible, uh, because if you go for this, then queen to e3, check king d1, and now bishop captures on c6. Uh, there's just no good way to handle this. Bishop to a4 check coming next, and if you don't um, do anything, well... Uh, uh, the, the queen is hanging. Also, you can't capture the queen. If you capture the queen, then just knight captures with e3 with check. We also will pick up the queen, so it's just going to be up too much material. Uh, no point in doing that. So the move you have to play here is actually queen to d4 check, but this was missed by Tari. Point is that now, uh, okay, obviously you can trade queens, but uh, why, why would Nodirbek do that? For example, uh, f6, you're going to capture on d7. D captures on e4, queen captures, and now you really have no other move than to trade queens as as the white queen will in infiltrate black's position and after captures and captures uh, white has uh, enough uh, to, to hold this to a draw however in the game rook to f1 was played by tari uh, and now comes uh, a, a very nice queen to e5 covering that d4 square c captures on d7 and rook a to d8 uh, eliminating all counterplay from uh, from tari Queen to c3, offering a queen trade, and now just d captures on e4. Uh, and trading queens isn't all that spectacular. If you trade queens right away, bishop captures on e4, rook captures on d7. Uh, it's uh, on, only black who's um, uh, pushing for a win here. So instead, after d captures on e4, we have bishop captures on e4, rook captures on d7, and now rook to f4. Of course, and that cannot be captured as the, the queen is pinned to the king. So queen captures on c3, rook captures on c3, and knight to e5 now we have rook to g3 with check uh knight to g6 and even rook f to g4 and uh, although it seems like it's white who's attacking uh there's no danger here it's uh, only um another back who is up uh, two full pawns so rook to e8 pins the bishop 
king to f2, and now comes rook to e6. And here, uh, a much cleaner way to win with pawn to h5. Uh, now, the, the, the rook really doesn't have um, <laughs> all that many squares. Okay, you can play rook to f4 because the knight is pinned, but still, let's say rook to d2 with check. King to g1, now king to h6, and your rook is hanging. And if something like bishop captures on g6, you will play rook to e1 with check, king to h2, and now rook to d1, going after rook to h1 checkmate. Uh, and after you stop this with something like rook to d3, you will happily trade f captures on g6, rook captures, rook captures, and you are up two full pawns. Of course, you will win this game. Uh, but instead, rook to e6 was played, uh, kind of adding another defender to the g6 knight, uh, bishop to d3, and now pawn to a5, just putting pieces and pawns on optimal squares, pawn to a4, pawn to b6, king to g1, and now rook to d5, winning more space, bishop to c4, um, skewering the rooks, but it doesn't really matter, rook to d1 with check, king to h2, and now just rook e to e1, going for rook to h1 checkmate. Here we have rook to f3, uh, uh, giving the king the g3 square, but now look at this beauty, pawn to h5. And now, how do you react to this? Uh, rook to g5 was played. The problem is if rook captures an f7, which seems like a beautiful move, uh, there's king to h6, and look at this. Look at the, the horror of, of this position. The, the white rook has no squares. You can't go here, you can't go here, you can't go here, uh, you can't go anywhere. If you go here, then you block the g3 square, rook to h1 will again be checkmate, you can't go here due to the knight, so your only option is rook captures, king captures, but now you're also down the exchange uh, while being down a pawn, so of course completely uh, winning for black. Instead, after h5, rook to g5 was played, but here just pawn to h4, and he was in this position on move 46 that Ariantari resigned the game, and another brilliant victory for Nodribek Abdusatrov in this year's uh, round 2 of, uh, uh, of Norway chess. So he takes the full point, uh, he he wins in classical, which means that he gets three points. He doesn't have to go into Armageddon. Uh, here, the g3 square is covered. A rook to h1 will be checkmate. And the only way to defend this is not pretty. Let's say pawn to g3. Rook to h1 with check will lose you even more material. Let's say pawn to h3 creates a pass pawn. And now if king to f2, now pawn to f, sorry, <laughs> pawn to f6 will challenge the rook here. And once the rook moves, uh, rook to h2 with check forces the king away from the uh, first and second rank. King to e3, and now you just move the rook from the h2 square, and now the pawn is becoming a queen. Uh, and even, even some silly counterplay like bishop to d3, okay, it looks like you might have something here. Not really, just rook to e1 with check, the king has to go up the board, and whatever you play, let's say king d4, rook to b4 with check, and you will pick up the rook on g4. Uh, for only, only one of the lines, but pretty much um, everything ends the same for white. Uh, so yeah, a beautiful win in the classical section uh, by Nodrebek Abdusatorov in round two of this year's uh, Norway Chess. Uh, we're co we're going to cover more games from round two as it's really a bloodbath, you know, a complete massacre. All of the games are on fire and uh, we're going to discuss the standings only after I have covered uh, a sufficient number of games. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, uh, so you can see, it's not even in bullet and blitz or, or even rapid that you can win games by completely blundering the game. It is also in classical. So queen to h4 completely blunders, but uh, you know, if if uh, both players miss it, then it's completely fine. Uh, I, I wonder at at what point uh, Noderbeck spotted it because it would be. You know, if he spotted it as soon as he played it, uh, maybe Tai would pick up on it. As it's very hard to imagine that he could remain calm. Uh, but maybe he didn't see it uh, for the rest of the game, and then you know, maybe a casual, uh, you know, uh, person watching, uh, you know, just told him, hey, you know, that Queen H4 was com a complete blunder, and then they would be amazed. So who knows what happened? Uh, but yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Very nicely done by Nodrebek. Um uh, I would like to thank Marcus Grabel, Buntiak Pang, uh, Revishing Reptiles YouTube, Michael Sakarias, and David Gasparian for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of this um, uh, wonderful event until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.